Hello everyone, uh, this is me, uh, Muhammad Atiku Rahman Ahad. Uh, I would like to make some series of uh, presentation, short presentation basically on human action or activity recognition. So this is the part one. Uh, I am from uh, the University of Dhaka, Bangladesh. So you can see these are the Bangla characters, uh, my university's logo. And this is uh, Osaka University where I currently I, I am working for the last uh, two years. So this is uh, my university and this uh, historical building uh, is next to my department. And actually it looks good outside but inside it's a horrible place for students because the, this is the central exam hall for science and engineering and related faculty students. And this is a department of chemistry, biochemistry, pharmacy and few others. So, uh, in this uh, short presentation, I will explore human action or activity, and uh, in future, I'll add some gate recognition stuffs. So, the first part is basics and applications, other parts will be uh, presented uh, in uh, next uh, part. So, human activity recognition or action recognition uh, basically, um, in the sensor domain. We mention it profoundly as HAR. So uh, you will find that this term, uh, shortened version, is very common in sensor based human activity recognition. So, uh, sensor based uh, human activity recognition uh, is uh, basically covering environmental sensors or on body wearable sensors. So, if we have on body wearable sensors, uh, this is uh, very good and most widely used but sometimes elderly people or patients they feel discomfort because they don't want to use any kind of extra sensors uh, on their body mm, and uh, uh, however uh, smartphones are very widely used to common people so uh, uh, we can explore the uh, inbuilt wearable sensors or sensors uh, within the smartphone video based human activity recognition uh, it is the, the most widely explored areas uh, for security and uh, surveillance and many other applications. Uh, but the main problem of this video based human activity recognition is the security and privacy because we don't want to show our videos or images uh, to be recorded and uh, to be extracted and so on. Uh, so that's why a video based human activity recognition. Uh, has other advancement we'll see like depth images instead of the RGB frames or skeleton joint points though we can say that I mean uh, there's a pseudo safe um, regarding privacy issues however video based has a, a huge problem uh, in outdoor performance especially skeleton I mean depth image has a huge problem because after a few meters uh, uh, in outdoor uh, we cannot get any sufficient information from which we can extract uh, motion data. So action uh, basically video based and sensor based as I mentioned. Video based uh, uh, you can say more human motion analysis. We can split it into three categories like body structure analysis. So nowadays because of open pose techniques or Kinex sensors we can get the body structure, body joint points uh, as skeleton and we can use those information for human understanding or human movement understanding. Human tracking is another field very widely used and uh, I mean a decade ago it was just like single person but uh, nowadays we have multiple people and in the crowd since we try to track different people Lots of problems regarding occlusions and missing and other things, but it's still uh, there are lots of progresses. Human action recognition or human action prediction, this is another domain, or uh, uh, as human action quality assessment, these kind of things are part of human motion analysis and uh, sometimes these are combined uh, to do some good work. So now look at uh, this. Uh, hmm, drop in different way like action recognition you can say that rgb based like image frame based so one video of one second if it is 30 frame per second so we get 
30 frames or 30 consecutive images. So RGB based human action recognitions are the most widely used and many methods like even thousand papers you can say. Skeleton based especially after the Kinect sensors uh, uh, arrived and um, then other uh, uh, sensors uh, which can extract uh, uh, depth motion information or depth maps and from that we can get a skeleton. So a skeleton can be achieved from uh, Kinect sensors in another way recent advancement especially for last year few papers uh, appeared in CVPR where they used kinetics data sets which is a large data set so I mean you can extract from RGB video then use open pose or similar methods to extract the uh, skeleton data so skeleton based uh, human action recognition is another domain uh, considering RGB and considering a skeleton you can understand that RGB means image 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 so huge volume but if you get only the body joint points like one frame or instead of one image you can extract like 20 or 22 or 25 body joints like uh, your shoulder elbow and knee and the waist and so on uh, so those points are basically just have some numbers so very easy uh, compared I mean in terms of uh, volume uh, or data size skeleton gives better RGB depth combined sometimes depth or map only uh, action recognition methods or gesture recognition methods uh, are there now next point is that uh, are those uh, recognition methods uh, based on segmented classes or continuous sequences for example we do many actions one after another so can we temporally segment uh, and recognize each separate actions basically it is a very difficult domain so almost all works in the last 20 years for example are based on segmented classes so if you say that there is a method recognizing 10 actions or 10 action classes basically each action by each subject or person are separate videos so if you have 10 action classes by 20 people so basically 10 times 20 200 separate videos so your system will pick one by one and try to recognize but in real life we have continuous sequences like I eat something then do something I write something I take the coffee cup and then uh, look at uh, uh, on uh, the screen and do something so these kind of continuous sequences are very difficult anyway the next point is that whether segmented or continuous uh, sequences I mean is it online real time or offline so most of the methods are offline because it is very difficult anyway. so a smartphone is very widely used uh, uh, human uh, for human uh, activity recognition uh, and uh, it has accelerometer gyroscopes these two are uh, mo most widely used especially the accelerometer uh, no security issue more or less ubiquitous uh, uh, use and comfort uh, it is uh, easier to carry uh, a mobile phone uh, with you and monitoring uh, even outside usually better efficient because we charge every day and uh, CPU technology is growing enormously in the mobile phones so 10 years before if you look at the advertisements of a mobile phone and today you find that they highlight the power the battery efficiency and especially camera and so on so it's a very good news that we can explore those and very cheap considering uh, iphone and others so there are many cheap uh, cameras now what do you mean by recognition recognition means what a person is doing so in the video case or even sensor case we need to initialize sometimes to track sometimes to estimate the pose and go for recognition so action recognition means what action or classes are present in the video we try to understand on the other hand in some papers uh, action detections are done it means that where and when an action is performed in a video sequence now look at uh, in the different domain like sensor based uh, uh, domain uh, for example if we have a mobile phone or some on-body sensors you get the raw sensor data from accelerometer for example a gyroscope time series data very light then we do some pre-processing filtering and others 
uh, we need to segment from, uh, from if we have continuous different actions, then uh, segmentation. Most of the cases, again, classes are segmented, so it is difficult. But some cases you need to, uh, to go for segmentation. Uh, feature extraction and then feature selection or normalization. Finally, we go for uh, classification. So most of the cases, the feature extraction part is the most important part. How can we extract distinguishable, separable features from similar kind of activities so that uh, machine learning uh, approaches uh, like support vector machines or random forest or even CNN based methods but CNN based methods uh, they have also they also use uh, I mean feature extraction in uh, uh, better ways uh, but uh, on that case some pre-processing can be done and there are different approaches you can explore so action recognition and, and activity recognition more or less similar terms uh, are very demanding especially in healthcare uh, surveillance and man machine interactions. There are plenty of researches done, but still the uh, field is wide open. So, some of the applications we can see video surveillance, parks, streets, venues for security purposes, sports video analysis. We know that in sports, how much they do analysis based on this kind of uh, uh, sensor data or uh, video data and so on, because they have lots of money so they can explore a lot. Uh, a robot industry or action understanding by robots, especially to support elderly people, make them happy, uh, and so on. Uh, in developing countries, poor countries, we don't care about the action understanding by a robot, but in many cases, uh, uh, like Japan or uh, others, uh, some European countries where elderly people are increasing uh, by huge margin. So uh, for them, this kind of robots can make them happy or entertain or interact with them especially for lonely people. Hospital rehabilitation center, a smart house, we need more action understanding uh, to support and make a better uh, future for them. Uh, entertainment industry and the monitoring crowded scenario, taking people fighting, fall detection is very important. Remember, I did not mention here fall recognition because if I fall down and you recognize this is fine, but can we detect prior to fall detection? So people don't fall usually, if I have sickness related fall detection, uh, that means that I am sick for uh, several hours or maybe longer. So I have some symptoms. Can my on body sensors understand and then help me to give some kind of feedback that I might may I mean, be sick or I may fall down or something like that? Another is sudden fall down. So uh, that is also important uh, that if I drop somewhere suddenly without any health injury I mean prior health information or uh, abnormal situation then uh, how to detect how to recognize so these things are important and there are uh, uh, applications to detect suspicious behavior and so on sensor based has like da daily exercises monitoring is very good patient monitoring outside hospital is important like if I have a surgery and after the surgery I return back to my home but I do not follow the uh, standard procedure of daily life and uh, I have a chance to go back to the hospital again. So this kind of monitoring and guiding the patient or, uh, for recovery, these are important. Elderly care in case of emergency, remote monitoring, for example, for pregnant women and sensor-based fall detection, these are very, very important research areas. So with that, I'd like to conclude the part one. I wanted to make it shorter, but it's still it's 14 minutes now already. So these are based on my books uh, here and uh, uh, other parts will be online soon. I would like to thank my, most of my collaborators in Japan and Bangladesh. So uh, you can visit my website to get uh, more information. Thank you so much.